This is the rarest and most powerful of the old PowerPC iMacs. It was sold for less than three months at the end of 2005, and Apple hasn't supported this thing or its architecture in decades. Which is why today, we're gonna install modern Linux on it. It's time for Phoenix Linux, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking beautiful and rare e-waste and torturing it with Linux, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. In our last video on this glorious 21.5 inch iMac G5 EyeSight, we took this thing apart, looked over its capacitors for signs of leakage, and then we professionally swapped in an SSD to replace the aging mechanical hard drive. And like many of you pointed out, I totally forgot to repaste the CPU, which is pretty important as these old G5s, well, they run pretty hot. So I'm definitely going to repaste it eventually. But today, we're gonna trust the decades old factory thermal compound to get us through a really interesting Linux install. One that I've wanted to do for ages. Phoenix Linux. Let me give you a little context before we just jump in. Throughout the 90s and into the 2000s, Apple's computer line was powered by the PowerPC architecture. And Apple back then was absolutely adamant that these chips made Macs vastly superior to Windows PCs with their crappy x86 chips. Until Apple abruptly changed course and switched the Mac to the same Intel processors. And it was this computer's fault. Well, the G5 processor inside of it, actually. These CPUs were so hard to keep cool that Apple was never even able to build a G5 powered laptop or even a G5 powered Mac mini. These went straight from G4 to Intel. This iMac, the smallest and fastest computer ever to run a G5, was also the death knell of the G5. And in the nearly 20 years since, most Linux distros have completely dropped support for PowerPC. In fact, there's only a handful left. Debian, OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, Adelie, Gen2, of course, but Phoenix Linux. Phoenix is PowerPC first. Based on Debian, Phoenix has been around for years. It's a project by the indomitable Casey Cullen. Boy, was I starstruck when you commented on one of my videos, by the way. It's intended to be easy to install on PowerPC Macs, fast on those machines, and importantly, usable. So I've burned a fresh 6.0.1 Phoenix install CD. Let's pop this in the iMac G5 and boot it up. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Delete Me. Okay, story time. When I was a wee young naive retro, I shared my full name and childhood home address on a vintage computing forum. Search engines picked up this forum post and then the data brokers picked it up. And for years, that childhood address haunted me online. This is exactly the kind of thing that today's sponsor Delete Me can help to address. Delete Me not only found all of this information floating out there, but showed me a ton of brokers and websites that have it and help me delete it. I wonder if that's where they got the name Delete Me from. But seriously, it's harder than ever today to keep your private information private. And with all the dangers out there, like phishing scams, identity theft, that person who really didn't like that thing you posted on Reddit that one time, it's more important than ever to protect your personal information. Get 20% off your Delete Me US consumer plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash action retro and use promo code actionretro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash actionretro code Action Retro. Okay, so this is a fresh burned copy of the Phoenix 6.0.1 installer, which you can go grab from the Phoenix website, which I will link down below, and yes, is really on a blogspot.com domain. A little weird, but if you think about it, it's actually fairly secure. Hold down option key after the chime to get to the boot menu. If your iMac is trying to be funny, it might pop the CD back out. We'll push that back in. And then eventually we'll have the icon of a optical disc and a little tux icon in the corner of that. That's our Phoenix DVD. And there it is, welcome to the Phoenix installer. Hitting enter should just start the install automatically. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful Linux startup experience. And that's it, we're actually in the installer already. And it's just menu driven, so this should be fairly easy to do. Yeah, detecting hardware, 
some of your hardware needs non-free firmware files to operate. And it's B43. Yeah, it's all B43. That's the Wi-Fi. I'm just going to take a picture of this so I can look for these later. Hail to the Ethernet gang. Okay, and this is proposing a partition scheme automatically for the whole disk. That's awesome. Normally, this is a huge pain for a lot of distros that, you know, this kind of just doesn't work right in. But here we go. We're going to overwrite Mac OS, finish partitioning, write changes to disk. 500 gigs worth of extended four. Partitioning successful. It is installing the base system. All right, install complete. Let's see if this boots into our brand new Phoenix install. Hey, look at that. Phoenix Linux. Look at this beautiful login screen. Oh, this looks awesome. All right, so the default username is Phoenix. Default password, Phoenix, capital P, capital W. Oh, uh-oh. The panel encountered a problem while loading Brisk Menu Factory, Brisk Menu. We'll do a ping Google, oops. Ping google.com. Yep, we are online. Okay, super user password, I think root admin pw. Yes, okay, now we should have apt, we do. And this is pulling from the Phoenix repositories at serve http.com. And we can upgrade the system. All right, updates complete. Hey, look at that, Brisk Menu works now. Nice. All right, so being that we are online, we have to check out the built-in web browser. Ah, no, look at that, we have the lovely Arctic Fox. Yes, use this as my default browser. This is actually a really great web browser based on Firefox with the old school user interface. But yeah, quite fast and zippy on here, surprisingly so. All right, of course we have to try the old YouTube test. I don't know if YouTube will like this web browser. Oh, that's right. Arctic Fox defaults to a mobile experience on YouTube. I have no idea if sound works on here. Ha, it's my favorite, this does not compute video, nice. Okay, I don't know that it's actually gonna try and play this video. There are ways around that though. Maybe we'll try some of those later. We have Classic Cube in the repository. Of course, we have to add that. Have to install Classic Cube. Oh. The good news is it's running at 59 frames per second. The bad news is half the textures are missing. Here we are, full screen, 30 FPS, nice. See-through textures, not so nice. Huh. That's weird. Oh, look at that! Sound works! <laughs> Alright, of course we have to see our NeoFetch screenshot. Have to install NeoFetch. Oh yeah, check it out running kernel 6.0.0. Yeah, our single PPC 970 FX running at 2.1 gigahertz and our lowly 1.4 gigs of RAM. Unfortunately, my four gig stick did not come yet, so we are running at a bit of a memory deficit. All right, I'm now installing the YouTube DL package so we can download videos from YouTube that we search up in the web browser. All right, YouTube downloader. Pop in our video URL. All right, well, I downloaded it at 480p, 3GP, and it's kind of fine. Look at that. Enormous amounts of time and energy to lovingly resurrect e-waste. I hope we'll consider subscribing to the channel. Totally usable. All right, well, I'm trying to install Java for totally normal reasons. And uh, yeah, something is not quite right with this package. All right, let's install some developer tools here. Apt install build essential. Nope. Yeah, I don't know if it's my fault or something wrong in the package management, maybe in the package servers. I'm having trouble installing some common packages. 
Now I know Casey Cullen graciously told me that if I had any issues when I was playing around with this to let him know, so I'll definitely forward this to him, but that's, uh, yeah, that's interesting. All right, let's try adding the Power Progress repository, which is meant for Debbie and Sid, but I think will work here in Phoenix. All right, sudo. Well, let's get sudo. Apt install sudo. All right, we'll do this with sudo exactly as instructed. Add the repo to sources. All right, we have to force this to be trusted. Sudo apt upgrade. All right, good, that does work. So we should be able to install Firefox ESR now. Uh, nope. I really wanted to try Sourbrotten on this machine. Just for fun, let's clone the Sourbrotten repository from GitHub. I was able to install git just fine. Of course, we're not gonna be able to compile it, but maybe that's something I can figure out later. Okay, so maybe we're not gonna do any compiling shenanigans, but let's try some more normal user-friendly stuff. I've installed LibreOffice. Oh yeah, now we're really word processing. Oh hey look, it sees my network printer. 12 point, I don't think so. 60 point. Oh yeah, there's my printer. You know what? That was easier than printing from modern Mac OS for the first time. Didn't have to add the printer or anything, it just worked. All right, I also installed Super Tux Cart so we can see what kind of 3D gaming performance this thing is actually capable of. Well, at least we know it's not just Classic Cube that's messed up. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I dare say that Phoenix doesn't quite like this graphics card. On the plus side, the frame rate is incredible. Okay, the last thing we'll take a look at here is the Phoenix Companion application, which might be able to get us around some of those quirks we found. For example, we can install a curated app suite Wow, which is gonna install a whole lot of stuff. Shotwell for photos, maps, oh, the YouTube downloader, which we did manually. Let's try this Phoenix GPU enabler too. Hardware acceleration is enabled. Let's enable compatibility mode. All right, well, under compatibility mode, Classic Cube just crashes. Let's give Super Tux Cart a try. Nope, that crashes too. <laughs> oh, compatibility mode disables hardware acceleration. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so that'll do it for this look at Phoenix Linux. And I know we ran into a couple uh, quirks, but honestly, for a single person passion project meant to keep a nearly 20 year old dead architecture alive and usable, this is pretty freaking impressive. And you know, the more eyes on something testing something out, the better it's gonna get because that's the nature of open source. So if you have an old PowerPC Macintosh sitting around, why not give Phoenix Linux a shot? But I think I'm going to try some more Linux distros on this machine. I never was able to get OpenSUSE Tumbleweed working on my G5 tower. I wonder if I can get it to work on this thing. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Alex the Rat, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Darren Johnstone, Dave's Garage, Drew Hamlin, Eduardo Fonseca, Free Hours 9, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rajansky, Graham, Greg from Rutk Mods, Harris Brody, JS, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowell, Nick Daniels, oh, it's just Jose, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Steve Salivan, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.